Hello. Abby and I have a fun review to share with you. So we just were talking about the first great story, the story of the universe, and we were talking about some of the laws that the particles were given. And so, Abby, I want to talk to you first about those particles that became the center of the Earth, the ones that came together and clung, clung tightly together, and those are the solids. The solids. Now, I have a model of a solid that came from something on our shelf that'll look familiar to you. Here I have the thousand cube from our golden bead set. And as you see, each of the beads is tightly bound to the other beads within this. And so if we tried to pass our finger or our hand through it, you couldn't. The particles are so tightly together that you cannot push your finger through. So these are pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be able to visualize each of those little tiny particles that make this solid but that they, they're clinging so tightly together you can't pass through them. Okay, so we're gonna set that one aside and we're going to talk about another solid or another characteristic of a solid. Here I have a little blue tile, like you might tile in your kitchen or your bathroom. Sometimes you have bigger ones on your floor. And I want, I'm gonna have Abby feel this, so it's not a magic trick. We have this piece of solid here and will it let your finger pass through? No, it's a solid. Okay, I'm gonna take this solid and I'm going to place it on a towel on our workspace here, and I am going to apply some force. Now, if I poked it with my finger, that's applying force, but that's not very much force. In fact, it's not enough force to do what we want to do. But I'm gonna take this hammer here, and if you're doing this at home, make sure you have your parents' permission and you have a tile that they're okay with you hitting with a hammer. I'm going to put on a pair of glasses for safety glasses. I'm going to have Abby do the same because she's sitting here with me. And anytime we're doing science experiments with hammers and things like that, we should have our safety glasses on. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, we can take our safety glasses off now that we're not breaking anything. Okay, we're going to open this up and I want you to see that we still have a solid tile, but when we added force, when we hit that with the hammer and put pressure on it, we broke this tile into other little pieces. Now, Abby, can your finger pass through any of those pieces? They're still solid. When we had a solid and we applied force, the solid stayed solid. It did break into smaller solids, but the pieces are all still solid. So when you have a solid and you apply force, it still remains a solid. It just breaks into smaller pieces. Okay, I have one more thing to talk about solids. Here I have a solid brick. Maybe you have a house made of bricks or maybe a fence or a gate or a, a wall <laughs> made out of bricks. Bricks are pretty cool. They've been using them for building. People have been using them for building for a long, long time because they're very sturdy. Now, I want you to put your hands out, Abby, and I'm gonna place this brick in her hands, and she's gonna tell me how it pushes. It's heavy. It's heavy? How did it push against your hands? Uh, my hands went down. Your hands went down, it pushed you down. So when you pick up something heavy that's solid, it's going to push down. Solids push down. Okay, let's do a quick review. Solid particles cling so tightly together that you can't pass your finger through. Sorry, I pulled it away. <laughs> and solids, when you apply force, remain solids, but they, they maybe break into smaller solids. And solid materials put force down. They push down. Solids push down. Okay, we have more to share with you with liquids and gases. Um, we just need to clean up the table and we'll be all ready for you. Hold on just a minute. Okay, Abby and I are back and we have tidied up our workspace and brought some other things over to share with you. Now we're going to talk about the particles that were giving, given other properties to follow. The particles that would cling not so tightly together that you couldn't pass through and that would have no shape of their own and when, they're, when they flow, they flow down and out. What are those called? Liquids. Liquids. Here we have 
a model of liquid molecules. We can't see the liquid particles or molecules when they're in a jar, but what we can see is we can see just like this, just like all these little spheres inside there, those are like the parts that make up water. And when we do this, you can see that those particles are rolling over the top of and around each other. Do you want to try to do that? And so they're they're clinging together, but they're still rolling around and they're maintaining their own particular shape. They're still particles, but they don't connect so tightly that they can't move. So this is what molecules of water look like or liquids look like if we could see them. Okay, here I have a tiny little pie dish and it has some liquid in it. Abby, can you poke your finger in there? Look at that. The liquid lets your finger come right in. Did your finger get a little wet? Yeah. It did. So water or liquids allow things to pass through them. They don't hold things apart, so they're not clinging so tightly that you can't get in there between them. So that was pretty fun. Okay, now I want to share part of my favorite, my favorite part of this demonstration. Actually, I love all of it because the part after this part is awesome too. We're gonna have to go outside and show you that part because it's a little messy for the house unless you're in the shower or something. Okay, here I have some different shaped glass jars. And I know those of you in, in class have seen these on the shelf and they're so much fun to look at. The seahorse and this leaf and then this little little guy here. Okay, so we're going to pour some liquid into these containers and see what happens to the liquid particles as we pour them inside. Are you ready? Okay, let's start with let's start with this little one. Now, you can follow along at home. What I usually say is as you watch it, use your hands to show how the liquid fills the container. So maybe Abby can do it while it fills it up. Okay, I'm gonna take our colored water so you can see it, because water, when it's clear, is hard to see. Abby's gonna get her hands up high enough so that you can see. Her hands are going to take the shape that this water takes that's it fills in this container. Woo! Uh, it's a little full. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So, as the liquid filled this container, it went like this. <laughs> it filled that container. Okay, now which would you like to do, the leaf or the seahorse? The seahorse. Okay, here's our seahorse. Okay. This one would be harder to, this one will be harder to fill, to cover the shape. We have a smaller funnel in the classroom, I forgot to bring it home, so I'm gonna do my best to not spill with this one. that that liquid came out of this measuring cup it was a cylinder and as I poured it through the funnel it changed changed its shape into a smaller cylinder and then when it went into the seahorse it changed its shape again it turned into a seahorse it turned into a seahorse and there's the seahorse right there looking at us it's very pretty it is very pretty Okay, I'm gonna set the seahorse out of the way because we still have our leaf. leaf. Okay, you can use your hands to make the shape that the water takes when it fills this container. Okay. All right. Start at the bottom and take the shape as it goes up, up, up. It's so slow. It's filling and it's filling and it's filling and it's filling and it's filling. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's gonna be overfilling. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <sighs> it only it's, overfilled it a little bit. It's very full. It's very full. <laughs> We're gonna put the lid on that. 
Okay. Something happened as we were filling this in. All of these corners and edges of the leaf, they all filled in with water. It's almost as if the liquid has no shape of its own. And liquid takes the shape of the container it's in. Think about that. Think about when you fill up your cup, like of your water cup for dinner time. And maybe you, your sibling has a different cup, but the water fills their cup too. And maybe your mom drinks her liquid out of a coffee cup and it takes the shape of her coffee cup. And maybe you've been to a fancy restaurant and they give you like a water, ooh, sorry. Um, maybe you've been to a fancy restaurant and they've given you a water goblet mm -hmm. and your water fills the goblet. That's because liquids have no shape of their own and they take the shape of the container they're put in. I wonder what the shape would look like. Think about that. Think about in our first great story when we talked about how the rain fell and it flowed down and out and it filled all the low places and crevices. What did it make? Oceans. It made the oceans. So does water have a shape of its own or does it take the shape of the land that's around it? It takes the shape of the land that's around it. Yes. So rivers change their shape depending on the land around them. So, okay, we have to go outside for the next part of our water talk. So. Uh, we will be right back with you when we go outside. Okay, so we just stepped outside and you can see it's pretty smoky out here. So we're gonna do this quick so we can get back inside. Here we have a bottle that has some liquid water in it. And we were talking about how liquids push. So how do liquids push? Well, liquids push out and they push out this way no. and this way and this way and they also push this way they push down and out they push down and out <laughs> once the water level got below those it stopped pouring out of them now the only hole that's left is the bottom one because liquids flow down and out. When we think about rivers, we will talk about rivers more next week, that rivers flow from the mountains downhill to the sea because water pushes down and out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed water pushes or liquids push down and out. Okay, so now we are here to talk about the third set of particles that were given laws to follow and these ones are the particles that don't cling together at all. In fact, they fill all open space. And what are those called? Gases. Gases. Okay, I don't have a model to show you what gases look like because gases, they're, the particles are so loose that they're not connected at all. They don't connect in any way. And so you can't really show that because it looks like this in front of us. I have a model of <laughs> Yes. Okay, so we can't really see what a gas looks like because it's all around us all the time. Now, the particles, I said this already, the particles of a gas don't cling together at all. In fact, anything can pass through a gas. So this is me passing through a gas. We can pass through the gas. <laughs> okay, and there's one more that you might want to try at home because you won't be able to experience this. Abby, close your eyes. What do you notice about the gas around you? It smells yummy. The gas around you has a different smell now? It's also cold. And it feels a little different? Mm hmm. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes. So the gas around us the gas around us most of the time doesn't have a lot of scent or smell to it, but sometimes things get into the air and we can smell them. The gases have a smell. In this case, it was frosted coconut snowball that we could smell. So gases are really cool. The particles are around us all the time. The particles don't cling together at all, so they let everything pass through them. And we can't see them, but sometimes we can smell them. And feel them. And feel them. 
Okay, so we have a gas demonstration that we have to take outside, and then we'll be back in to wrap everything up. Just a minute. Start. Okay, Abby and I are out here for one more demonstration. This is the very last one. And this one, we're talking about gases. And when we were talking inside, we said that you can't usually see gases, which is funny because the sky is full of smoke. And so we can kind of see the sky right now. Okay, so here I have a jar with some water in it. And here I just have a piece of paper. Now, we're going to look at the pressure that's pushing against this piece of paper, but we can't just see it when it's floating out here. We're gonna put it on this jar and we're gonna try something. And we're gonna hope that this works. Okay, so we're gonna watch and see what pressures are pushing on this piece of paper. <laughs> so here we have a jar full of water and we have a piece of paper and the gases are all around. In fact, the gases are even pushing up on that piece of paper because gases push in all directions. They push down, they push out, they push up, they push diagonal, all around. They push every way there possibly could be. Yeah. Not over my head, please. <laughs> so something fun, if you, want, if you do this at home, uh, make sure you ask your parents and you do it outside, preferably over grass. So you can try all sorts of experiments on how long the gas will push. Some people in the past have followed up by seeing if hot water makes a difference or if cold water makes a difference. So you can try that. So let's see. Our gases are still pull it, pushing in all directions. I'm afraid it's going to come gushing out on me. <laughs> I'm going to just do that. Well, the gas is pushing that way and that way and that way and that way and that way. In every way imaginable. It's not very effective on the sides, though, because of how thin the paper is. That's true. You're hearing Selena's voice, our video person today. Okay, how long do we want to wait to see how far, the, how hard the gas pushes? Ten more seconds until I get to Okay, let's count this together. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Gases push in all directions. They're pushing up, they're pushing down, they're pushing all around. The gas though is so light, so light, that we don't usually feel it against our skin because it's pushing against us in all the ways, but we just don't feel it unless it's under pressure. Pretty cool. Okay, we'll see you back inside. Okay, so we're back inside from that last demonstration about gases. And so I want to kind of wrap up our understanding or all of those new ideas or reviewed ideas that we have about solids, liquids, and gases. Now, here in these three little bowls, I have an example of each of our particles following their properties. So here I have a solid. I have a solid water, which we call ice. And these particles, I can't push through. I can push them around because there's many ice cubes in there, but we can't put our fingers through them. And if we applied force, we could break them. We could crush them. And here we have the second kind of particle we talked about, liquids, which lets us pass through it. The particles are clinging loosely together so that things can pass through and it can change its shape. And here, this one might look empty, but this one here is actually full, more full than either of the other ones because it is full of gas. And gas takes up all this space. We just don't always see it. There's some gas in here and in there. There's gas in all three of them. So it's between the particles of the other pieces. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this. We talked about solids. Solids cling so tightly together that you can't pass through them. They push down and they don't let you pass through. When you apply force, they break into other pieces of solids, but they still remain solid. Liquids cling loosely together so that the particles can move past, let you move past. They also, liquids, have no shape of their own. They take the shape of the container they're in. And like we saw outside, when you fill a bottle with it and the bottle has holes, you can see that water, liquid, pushes out 
and down. And so liquids can push in two directions, down and to the sides. And then our third one, the, the gases, gas particles don't cling together at all. They let you move freely through them. They can, sometimes we can see them. We saw that outside when we saw the smoke in the sky. Sometimes the gases can be seen. They can also be smelled. Maybe you've smelled some gas. And gases can push in many directions. They don't just push um, down, they don't push out. They also push up. Gases push in all directions. Okay, that was a really fun way of reviewing solids, liquids, and gases. I hope you enjoyed these lessons and I can't wait to share more with you. Bye-bye.